Welcome to the Lift Junction Workshop. I'm Tyler. This is my 1962 Ford F600 called Mouse. And if you want to see this thing run, check out my other videos. Today we're going to talk about wheels. We've got two wheels here. One of them is stock to the truck and one of them is not. One of them is potentially safe to use and one of them could kill you. Let's go in depth about that, figure out how to identify them easily, and then talk about what's dangerous about them. At first glance, these wheels look really similar, but to the trained eye, these are known as Ferristone RH 5 degree widow makers, and these are known as split ring wheels. Now, these are actually the safer ones, can you guess, because they're not called widow makers. And we'll go into depth later on about what makes them different. But first, let's pull them off. This is my dad, Eric, with some safety tips. So before we work on this wheel, um, this one is not as critical because if it blows, it's gonna blow into the truck, which would probably damage a lot of things we don't want it to damage. We're just gonna pop the core out of this um, valve stem to release all the pressure so we don't have to worry about it blowing up on us. So the back ones, if they blow, they're gonna blow out at you, so we really need to be careful back there. Quick note on the lugs. These are actually on the driver's side, they have an L on the end of the stud, which means that's left-hand thread, so righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. We also got a specialized bud wheel remover socket, which has a one and a half inch hex on the outside and then the uh, little square on the inside that'll help on the rear axle. It's also neat that this says 62 up here, which shows us that it does match the 62 truck. I also had to buy this giant um, inch drive impact wrench from um, Harbor Freight. We're gonna throw that on and ugga dugga. I got some decent half wheels to throw on here. I am gonna conserve the old hardware for now, and when I go and, and make sure the brakes are all in good condition, I'll replace all the hardware with new stuff. Got the deuce and a half wheel mounted. Looks pretty good. One note, if you're using a large one inch Harbor Freight impact wrench with a uh, 3 8 hose, keep that hose real short. Uh, because if you have a long hose, we found we had a hose going to the barn, and that actually would take up the air in the hose faster than it would pull it out of the tank. So keep a nice short hose. Let's move on to the rear end. On the back end, it's common to have the valve stem go toward the inside of the wheel. That way, if it blows up, your hand isn't reaching around here. So we're gonna we're gonna undo this one from the inside. If this thing blows, it's coming straight out this way, so we want to make sure that we're all safe. We're all safe, we're going to pull the lugs off. You're going to take the nut off first, and then the inner one will come off after you get that outer wheel off. Hey. We've been giving this all the duggas for a couple hours. It's time to let the PB blaster soak in, see if it can come back a different day and get them out. Alright, so next weekend I put some seafoam deep creep on these lugs. We'll see if they come off with the Ugga dugga. If not, we got a torch that we fixed. That one came off. Like butter. Either the seafoam stuff works good. Or, Holy! Or the PB has been soaking for a couple weeks. I think both. This is unbelievable. We had this thing soaking in PB blaster for probably a, a month now, at least, and had to use uh, heat and all kinds of stuff. Couldn't get it off. And then this deep creep stuff I just threw on last night as a kind of Hail Mary, I guess. And no no heat, nothing, just brrr. So <laughs> maybe try this. I know Project Farm did a video on this and, and deep creep came out as, if not the top, one of the top um, options. Anyway, we got our left-hand thread nuts off and they um, 
are in the, uh, they call it double nut system. So this is the outside nut or the outer nut. This is the inner nut. So the inner part of the socket has the um, it's 13 16 square drive. We'll throw that on there and see if we can get the inner nuts out. Uh, last week we took the air completely out of these tires because these are widow makers and we don't want them to uh, have the potential to uh, explode on us. So. so we're safe. All right, let's give it a shot. No way! man. It's insane. Just a recap of some of the tricks we use to get these off. If you have one of these and you're having uh, issues with it, get that inch drive impact wrench. Uh, get a very short hose on it from a big air compressor. And then try the seafoam deep creep if you can to get in there and, and penetrate and get that, get that rust out. It also helps that the weather is nice. It's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And when I got the truck running, it was about zero degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, wait for that spring weather to come around. It'll be a lot easier. Now that we've swapped from the original RH5 degrees to safer bud split ring wheels, Let's look at an abbreviated history of multi-piece wheels, widow makers, and how to identify them. There's a lot of confusion and misinformation about so-called split rims on the internet. I've made this video in an effort to offer concise, reliable information for anyone who might be curious about them, and jumping off points for those who might want to know more. Please check the video description for the OSHA and other government documents I used as sources. In a 1980 OSHA document, the agency named four different multi-piece wheel designs as being potentially hazardous to tire service personnel. The first was the popular Firestone RH5 degree KL Widowmaker, which was also produced by Kelsey Hayes and Bud. It's made of two solid barrel halves, which are pressed together. Next, the split ring wheel featured a solid barrel and a split side ring. A similar three-piece design was known as a lock ring wheel, which uses a split lock ring to hold a solid ring to a solid barrel. Last, the Goodyear KW type made it a solid side ring to a split barrel. This type seems to be extremely rare. We will concentrate on widow makers and split ring wheels because they seem to be the most common types currently on old trucks and because the split ring wheels are a serviceable replacement for widow makers. The common danger of all these multi-piece wheels is that they rely on interlocking rings or flanges to hold them together in lieu of bolts. This was done primarily for cost savings and weight savings, but when improperly installed, each one of these wheel designs could separate violently. OSHA points out that a 20-inch truck tire inflated to 105 psi pushes on that rim with a force of 40,000 pounds. That's enough to accelerate a wheel side ring to 130 miles an hour and send a 215 pound person 10 feet in the air. Video footage of these tests is on YouTube, but due to their graphic nature, I won't include them in this video. Trust me, it's bad. OSHA state that RH5 degree type wheels alone had caused at least 81 incidents by 1973, with even more in the following years, making them twice as dangerous as other types of multi-piece wheels. About 13% of these incidents resulted in fatalities, since these numbers represent only 10 U.S. states, the real death toll for Widowmakers could be upwards of several dozen since the wheel's introduction in 1946. The main cause of accidents involving split rims is due to a lack of employee training on safe procedures. However, the RH5 degree earned the name Widowmaker for a reason. It's the only wheel out of the four mentioned that once mounted is impossible to check for proper assembly. The only way to know for sure that the wheel is assembled correctly is to put it in a safety cage and air it up. If the wheel explodes, it was not assembled right. Check out a wheel from my F600. It's a 1962 Firestone style RH5 degree wheel wearing a period correct 20 inch bias ply tire. Here we have the outer ring in blue, which includes the center of the wheel. This is the part that gets physically bolted to the truck. Follow the stamping toward the middle of the barrel and you can see the tiny eighth inch wide flange where it interlocks with the inner ring in yellow. That tiny press fit flange is the only thing holding this wheel and its 40,000 pounds of pressure together. Even scarier is the fact that you can't see if it's seated properly once you have a tire mounted. 
Many people argued that this shortcoming was serious enough that the wheel should not have been produced at all. Use this information to identify Widowmakers. First, you notice that there is no flange on the bead seat, as this is a single stamping. Second, look at the inside of the barrel. You will be able to clearly see the mating flange just like this. If you can find these two features, you can be pretty sure you have Widowmakers. To be sure, check the stampings and the metal itself. The RH 5 degree designation will be present on the wheel. Compare that to a 1966 Bud BW 5 degree split ring wheel. This is functionally identical to the Army surplus wheels I installed on the truck. Since the split ring is located on the outside visible portion of the wheel, you can easily see if it is snapped into place before inflating the tire. OSHA says one of the main factors for incidents involving these and three-piece wheels is that some tire service professionals would swap lock rings from wheel to wheel or attempt to reuse damaged components. Since each manufacturer could have a slightly different design, the mismatched rings could blow off when inflated. OSHA compiled a comprehensive three-page long list to facilitate the correct and safe matching of these parts. You can differentiate split ring wheels from three-piece lock ring wheels quite easily. First, look for a separate ring on the front face of the wheel. If you can find a small split in the ring, it's a split ring wheel. However, if the ring is continuous, look for a smaller split lock ring. Both of these wheel styles have smooth one-piece rim barrels as opposed to the distinctive raised portion found on Widowmakers. Since over 15 million Widowmaker wheels were produced between 1946 and 1973, if you deal with big, Cold War era trucks, you'll probably run across a set sooner or later. Split ring and lock ring wheels were available in a wide variety of vehicles, from light duty 4x4s and pickups, up to buses, military vehicles, and heavy duty trucks. Due to the accessibility of this information on both safe component matching and proper tire mounting procedures, these split ring and lock ring type wheels are still serviceable. OSHA lists these as current production wheels. If you're looking for a safer and relatively affordable alternative to Widowmakers, check out your split ring options. The big asterisk some people will add is that technically RH5 degree Widowmaker wheels still do exist, and technically OSHA lists recommended procedures for mounting tires on these. However, this doesn't mean you should try it. These wheels have killed many experienced professionals, and safer army surplus split ring wheels are relatively cheap. No one at a car show will be able to tell a difference once they're painted. But if you're super hardcore about the absolute originality on an antique truck, you should find someone who personally worked on these back in the day. In this video, we covered historical information about common multi-piece truck wheels, provided tips for removing them from the truck, and looked at a real-life example to help you better understand what makes RH5 degree Widowmaker wheels so dangerous. Again, I'm linking all my source documentation in the description, so please check that out. If you enjoyed this video, take a look at my other videos of the F600, my V4-powered Saab, and more. Thanks for watching, and press on.